If you're looking to buy a powerful laptop, and I don't mean like middle of the range power, I mean like a Dodge Hellcat in the world of laptops, you really don't have many choices. It's a gaming PC. It's probably a Dell XPS or it's probably a MacBook Pro. And that typically has been the answers that you would get if you ask your techie friend or neighbor or uncle or whoever it is that you talk to about these kind of things. Well, Samsung kind of snuck up on us here and they popped out the Galaxy Book 3 range with a Pro and then they brought out an Ultra using a H-series processor for the highest performance, giving up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte SSD, and NVIDIA RTX 4050, 4070 graphics. Does it work in a package? Let's go find out, okay? It's 16 inches, it is big, 3.95 pounds. It's got some weight, and if you don't need a really big device, you're not gonna wanna go with this. But if you do, it is pretty slim, okay? I don't think it's bad at all. And I've had comments from people who've seen it and, and you know, literally said like, that is a svelte beauty. Two USB-C Thunderbolts, HDMI, this has got HDMI 2. Some of the other models are only 1.4, so you won't get 4K60. On those, you will on here from HDMI. On those, you're gonna have to use the Thunderbolts instead. You got a headphone jack, you got a micro SD card slot, you got plenty of heat that comes out the bottom, so it does get warm. It hasn't really got unbearably hot in the time I've been using it, but I haven't really pushed it yet either. So I suspect it probably will. And it does vent out and down. I don't like that. I don't know why manufacturers still do that. Microsoft had a far superior solution with the Surface Laptop Studio where the vents were all around. It just looks a little bit kind of out there. But I like the idea of pushing air sideways instead of pushing it down. It is a fingerprint magnet. I don't know if you can see that or not. We'll try and get you some other shots. It's not quite as bad as Samsung's from a couple of years ago, but I mean, there's definitely fingerprints there. Once you open that screen, holy moly, all of those things mean nothing. It is a Samsung AMO LED screen. There is no contest, there is no comparison. These are by far the most beautiful screens out there. It's nicer than the Dell XPS OLED screen. It's nicer than the MacBook Pro screen, in my opinion. It's nicer than everything. The blacks are gloriously black. The colors are magnificent. The screen brightness has been just fine for me. Plenty bright, not too much glare. Hey, check out some screen comparisons here. I've got a MacBook Pro 16. I'm gonna show you what the screen looks like compared to the Samsung. I think Samsung just kind of holds like the special AMO LED screens for themselves and then sells everybody else like the second quality ones or something because they always just look a little bit better. This is definitely the Windows powerhouse to buy right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, even though we haven't even finished the review. I don't know why anybody would buy a Dell XPS over this machine, looking at what you get for your money, looking at the quality of that screen, and looking at the build quality, because XPSs have notorious issues with trackpads and other build quality issues that just haven't gone away through the generations. I think there were some early Samsungs that some people talked about screens cracking. I haven't seen that at all. I actually use Samsungs with some of my staff in my co-working spaces, daily machines, no issues, no screens cracking. I like to think they're pretty careful with them, but I'm sure they're not quite as careful as probably I am with tech. So, you know, take that for what you will. It's got all the connectivity and it's got a trackpad that's the size of a small island. Like literally, it's gigantic. And normally I don't like trackpads that are off center. This thing's so big, it hasn't really caused me a problem. It's, I think it's even bigger than a MacBook Pro. At least it looks like it. I probably need to get the measuring tape out and check it, but it's magnificent and you get a numeric keypad. Is it really useful every day? No. When you're doing numbers, is it useful? Well, yeah, it is. And it's there and you've got the space, so why not? In the world of Windows, I don't think there's anything that's touching this right now. With the, the performance that you're getting, the latest 13th gen chip, serious power, and a reasonable price point, and then throw in Samsung's deals and discounts and promos. I got this as an open box from Best Buy. I'm not gonna say how much I got it for. Let me just say, I can't believe how much I stole it for, because it was ridiculously cheap for something this powerful. So let me show you some benchmarks here. Let's talk about performance for a minute, because obviously that's something that y'all are gonna care about. If you're looking at this compared to Windows machines, again, I don't think there's anything out there that's gonna beat it, because RTX 4050 and 4070, barely anybody else has got those other than a couple of gaming machines, really. And for people who are creators, you wanna go meet clients, that kind of stuff. I just don't think gaming machines are the way to go. Something like this is a little bit more elegant compared to MacBook Pro. Single cores, surprisingly similar. Multi-core, the M2 Max, 
does seem to take the lead, although on this benchmark, let me just say, my M2 Max in the studio is a 32 gig. I don't have a 16 gig because you can't get a 16 gig M2 Max. So I'm sure that also plays a little bit in there. When you look at the M1 comparisons, where I do have 16 gig, like an M1 MacBook Pro 16, you see that this actually does beat that. So it's kind of difficult to get exactly where we want to be. I wish I'd have got a 32 gig Ultra and then it would have been better for you, but I didn't. And so it's the best I can show you. In the real world, I can tell you that battery life is shockingly bad. I don't know why they put a tiny battery in it. This should have had like a 90 watt hour, or 100 watt hour battery in it. They didn't do it. I think it's a 76 watt hour, which is ridiculously small for a laptop that's this powerful. And I haven't gone from full 100% to dead in a single session, but I can tell you every time I use it, I have serious battery anxiety. I look at it and it says, 43% left, one hour, 40 minutes. It's like, whoa, hang on a second. Really? I've noticed that with the lid closed, I'm losing battery faster than I do with a typical Windows machine. Again, I've only had this for a little while, so that may be something to do with it. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it because I really don't know the answer yet. If you can get more than five or six hours on this, in regular real world performance, I will be amazed. So if you're looking for long battery life, this is not the machine for you. If you're constantly docked or you're near to a wall, as a lot of users are, the battery life becomes a non-issue. And then it's just, you know, do you want a powerful Windows machine or do you want a powerful Mac? Because again, I don't think there's anything in the Windows world that I would buy over this device. There's no way I'd buy a Dell XPS, no way at all. This has got a nicer build quality, it's a nicer color, it's got higher performance, it's got that RTX chip, it's got everything that you need. And so it kind of leaves us in a place where Samsung's done what Microsoft needed to do. They've actually gone out and built a real world challenger to the question that people ask. What is the best powerful laptop I can buy? It used to really be a one trick pony and Apple MacBook Pro would be the answer, but now it's not. You've got two answers and two choices. And I think choice is a great thing because a lot of us like to live in the world of Windows. And if you need Windows and you don't want to use a MacBook Pro, what are you supposed to do? Thank you, Samsung. We've now got an answer. You may be wondering what is the difference between the Galaxy Book 3 Pro and the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra and then also the Galaxy Book 3 360. Obviously, 360 is the easy one because it's a 360, folks. It spins around, it's a flipper. You can put it in tent mode, all that kind of stuff. But it does get a little bit confusing because there's different options in each one that you can't get in some of the others. For example, the Ultra comes with the H series 13th gen chips, which is what you would expect. That's the most powerful processor. But the other two only come with the P series processors. Even at the very top, you cannot get a H series chip. You've got Intel. Iris graphics in both of the regular Pro models, but you've got NVIDIA RDX 4050, 4070 in the Ultra, which again, that sounds reasonable. You would expect the Ultra to have the more powerful graphics. You can get the 14 inch screen in the regular Pro. You cannot get it in the flipping style 360 and you cannot get it in the Ultra style. So that's a plus one to Apple because you can get the 14 and 16 in all the specification options. I don't know why they didn't do an Ultra 14 especially when the battery's so small, but I guess they wanted to test the water and not have to make two models maybe. I don't know. It's just surprising because I think a lot of people like the 14 inch screen size more from a portability point of view, but whatever. And then the regular Pro start at 256 on the storage, but the Ultra starts at 512. So I kind of think all the Pro models should start at 512, but again, I'm sure it's just a cost choice. The regular Pro models come with 256 gig starting point and eight gig of memory, whereas the Ultra, is 16 gig and 512. So double the storage, double the memory at the base level. Battery is gonna be 76 watt hours across all three, which is great. All the connectivity is the same in each one. You got those two USB-C Thunderbolts, you got the HDMI, you've got the headphone jack, and you've got the micro SD card slot, I believe in all three models. So that's nice as well, that they didn't leave some things out for the regular pro users that they included in the Ultra, but you can get a nano SIM in the 360. Can't get it in the regular pro, can't get it in the Ultra, but you can get a SIM card in the 360. So if you need mobile connectivity while you're out and about, that's gonna kind of dictate what you can go for. Again, I don't think that's a big deal, and it's probably a smart choice. If you lug in an Ultra around, 
you really want to be near power anyway, so mobile connectivity is probably not that big of a deal. The regular Pro and the 360 Pro both come in the beige color as well as the graphite, and the Ultra only comes in the graphite. 